We're going to look at how to create a logo in ARCHICAD now. I've just got this Apple logo, we're going to use this. Now the intention is that you're going to create your own logo. Um, maybe you've drawn a sketch of something, you're going to bring it into ARCHICAD and we're going to use the tools in ARCHICAD to trace it. Uh, we're going to use vector tools so that we can have this as a vector based logo rather than uh, a bitmap. So we're going to use the line tool or the arc tool, the fill tool, the spline tool. We're going to try to keep it as, as real as possible. So wherever possible we're going to use real arcs for this, not the spline tool. If it was much more complicated then we could use the spline. So I'll show you both. Uh, and in this case because it's a black logo I'm actually just going to start with colors like red just so we can see what I'm doing. I'm not going to worry too much about the scale of what I'm doing. We can resize when we're finished. So I'm just going to trace exactly what we can see on the screen. So here again it's, it's not a real vector image. We see as we zoom in it becomes very pixelated. So I'm just going to basically guess. So I talked before about how we should always draw perfectly in ARCHICAD and now I'm, I'm guessing but of course uh, it's a bit of a fun exercise. So with a, an arc I'm using the three point arc method so I click start, middle and end and then I define the arc length. Click. So there's my arc here. Now we can try to find more real arcs. I'm, I didn't make this logo, I don't know exactly how it's made. Let's have a quick look at how it works. We can see that a fair bit of it is a real arc and then it starts to change direction so we, we can't continue that forever. It'd be nice to sort of make it as real an arc as possible so we could try to do that uh, but we might not be getting it right. Again this sort of looks like it's a bit of a straight line or a slight arc and then another arc I could guess this, but I'm sure I'm going to get it wrong. Let's draw a straight line across here. Now what I'm also going to do to make this easy is only draw half of it. And then once I've drawn half, I will mirror a copy. So always try to, where possible, think of clever ways of working to reduce what you need to do. Um, I'm going to just guess again that one. Let's make this a straight line for a bit. And... Um, now we'll do another bit of an arc. So to do this arc, we'll use again the three point method, start, middle, end, finish. All right, so we've got that side. Um, let's do this one. I'm gonna use the spline tool this time just so you can see a different method. Now the spline tool is gonna be a lot faster for something like this. It might just not be as accurate. So let's extend this midway point, uh, basically again a construction line. We can use our spline tool. I'm going to click. I'm going to click. I'm going to keep clicking. And as you see, I do, as I draw more points of the spline, it's going to adjust constantly to try to fit the shape that I'm drawing. Now, this is, again, a lot less um, perfect, geometrically perfect than the arc tool, but it's um, pretty good when we're trying to draw organic shapes. So we can see that that manage to fit the, the shape of the apple pretty well. It's not perfect, but it, it'll be fine for what we're trying to create. So let's now get rid of our reference lines. I'm going to group those together. Edit grouping group. I'm going to, oops, I missed one. Edit grouping group. Now I'm going to mirror a copy. So we, I have these here, but uh, I haven't shown you how I've made that. I've done that in other videos. But let's have a look by just going right-click, move, mirror, a copy. Now that's interesting. I, I thought that this would be symmetrical. It's actually interesting. It's not at all symmetrical. So that method won't work. Let's um, instead just continue using the spline tool to finish this off. I want to show you how to use the fill tool to make this a solid black object. Oh, that was horrible. Let's zoom in. Uh, I'm going to get rid of that black point or node. To do that, I grab the node and move it to another node, and that will delete it. Um, oh, I might even just do another one here. 
or I can just try to clean that one up. There we go. Make it a bit straighter. Uh, now with the fill tool, I could of course go around and try to measure that whole outside shape again, but that's crazy. So instead what I'm going to do is use the magic wand tool. So magic wand is spacebar. I'm going to hover over the middle of my apple, click, didn't find it. Sometimes if it's a, a complicated shape, clicking in the middle of an object doesn't help it to locate it. What we can do instead is click on the bounding box, click, and often that will actually help it to, to close the shape. Now to, to do the leaf, this time I'm definitely going to use arcs rather than um, spline. I, I can't really do a center point arc. It would be nice if I could. I'm going to again use that three point arc method. Double click to finish. Now in this case I'm also going to just use a mirror a copy tool. Click across this vertice. Again it's very interesting. It, it doesn't, it's not at all equal but I can stretch it. It's also interesting that that's not quite right but that's cool because I'm not trying to actually copy the apple exactly, I'm just trying to make a logo. So what I'm left with uh, is lots of lines, arcs, splines, and two fills. At the end of the day, I actually don't want the splines um, and the arcs, I just want the fill. So I'm going to move that out of the way, delete all this other stuff. Uh, and then I'm going to turn that to black and I'm going to add an outline. It's currently 25% which is interesting so we can see that the middle is grey. I'm going to change that to solid fill so it looked like the original that we had and now we've got an Apple logo. I'm not sure why we want an Apple logo um, except for the fact that I'm currently drawing on an Apple MacBook Air um, and so now of course we could, um, I'll do this properly save it as a save view, put it in the worksheets, sorry, right, let's do that better, Apple logo, save current view, and then go to our um, title block that we're producing and drag and drop that Apple logo into here. Now it's too big, that's fine, we can see that, we can shrink this page to fit, frame, frame fit to drawing. I don't want the title at the bottom so I can go and turn that off. No title and I could either do one of two things. I could scale this using this option resize. I could define graphically if I wanted to or I could go back into my original and make it smaller there. So again, the intention is that you're doing this with your logo, I just use the Apple logo to make it fast, uh, and that's how we can bring our own logos into our title block. Now we could have also, of course, got the Apple copy, oh sorry, I used Command C or Control C, edit, copy, and paste, could do that as well, but the value of doing referenced drawings is I could of course change the color of this if I wanted to. And then when I go to my layout, it will automatically update, but the copied one won't. So reference drawings always are a little bit more beneficial for their ability to be able to update. And of course, that could be an externally referenced drawing so that that way we could update it on all of our different projects rather than just being in this one individual file.